各位网友，大家好，欢迎收看小老婆汽机车资讯网，我是大魔王斯汀格。大家有没有看到这顶安全帽？这是一个牌子，叫做 NHK。如果有在注意 MotoGP 的朋友呢，哈，应该会知道说，这个帽子虽然说大家可能不是那么熟悉，但是它是有赞助 MotoGP 的，而且大家有没有看到上面这个签名？你知道是谁吗？我给大家卖个关子，三秒钟猜猜看这是谁？这是他的签名帽。这一位呢，好，是一个车手 ，Moto2 的二零二一年的年度冠军，叫做 r e m y Garner， 他的爸爸。叫做 Wayne Gardner， 这是一个非常有名的赛车家族。那我们今天呢，很高兴有这个机会拿到他的签名帽，而且我们要打电话给他，现场访问他。究竟电话打不打得通？我们来试试看吧。Hello。Hey。Hi， how are you？ I'm good. I'm good. Good man, HK babies. Yeah, I, I got this one too. Ah, <笑> yours. Hi Remy, I, I'm, I'm Richard from Taiwan, NHK Taiwan. Nice to meet you. I'm a singer from Taiwan also. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. I think we can start a, just like a discussion about, we prepare some question for you. Well, obviously we know you are a Remy Gunner and it's a 2021 Motor 2 World Champion. Um, but we want to know about a story about a motorcycle and you. Could you tell me about something that or share to our, our readers in Taiwan? Um, from when I was younger? Well, uh, yeah, basically, you know, I started racing uh, on dirt track. I started actually on dirt bikes and uh, I, I didn't start racing until I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and I raced dirt track for three years and eventually I became an Australian champion mm -hmm. in dirt track. Mm -hmm. uh, at 12 years old, I started trying road racing. From there, everything, you know, I was quite, you know, quite fast straight away, and I didn't have the level of, of the Europeans. But uh, that's why we moved to Spain, and, mm -hmm. and I bit step by step in, in Spain. Uh, I was improving my level, improving myself, but for sure, a lot of a lot of years of hard work and, and, and injuries. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has paid off in the end. So you started in front of the third bike, right? Exactly. So not motocross, dirt track. So it's like flat, uh, mm -hmm. flat uh, sliding, and, and you know, uh, sliding around, understanding control of, of the throttle, and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. so I, I started out riding dirt bikes, and before that, I even started riding just you know mini bikes on my on my farm with mm -hmm. my brother Pat. So yeah, um, humble beginnings. <laughs> and we know that your father, Wayne Garner, was very very. Impressive! It's a world champion for the for the GP. Did he teach you how to ride a bike or something, or give you any pressures you have to be a racer? Yeah, for sure. You know, he's helped me uh, in my career. Uh -huh. um, he's taught me everything. You know, he's the best. He's the best teacher I could have. So it's helped me a lot. For sure, it's closed some of the doors as well. But um, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely nice. You know, to have. You know, such a such a good mentor from a young age. Um, mm -hmm. But the last few years, you know, I'm a big boy now, so I had to kind of do it on my own, you know. But uh, but yeah, yeah um, definitely definitely cool, and uh, it's a nice story, I think, as well. So do you think uh, the technique he had is the similar with you had? I mean, because the maybe 20 years difference for the bikes. So for yeah. the handling, is it the same in his age and your age? Yeah, for sure. It's now it's a lot different, especially mm -hmm. with uh, the bigger bikes now. Mm -hmm. uh, the the base is still the same, you know, of how to ride a motorcycle and, and how to get the, the the basic skills and and for sure, you know, it's it, you know that that hasn't changed from from thirty years ago to, to today. But uh, for sure, technically technically wise, with the new bikes, it's a lot different, and uh, there's a lot more you have to think about now, and there's a lot more that. Is in play, uh, for example, with electronics and brakes and, mm -hmm. and, and, and a lot more things than, than what they had back in the day. So it's a little bit different. There's a few things that you know, I'm for sure, he, he, I don't even think he'd understand. But uh, the principle of riding a motorcycle hasn't changed. So it's it's quite similar. You know, riding, the riding. Bike is, yeah. Understand. 
But yeah, definitely a lot more technology and a lot more things to take into account when you're on top of the bike. Mm -hmm. um, in the Moto2, you have tried Honda and Triumph, um, I mean the engine. So in your opinion, what kind of the engine you yeah you like it? The Triumph is much better. Ah, okay. Honda engine, uh, reliable. Reliable? <laughs> hmm, that's very important. Reliable, but the 600 is... There's no talk. It's uh, it's kind of like a Moto three with big tires. Mm -hmm. and, like, you know, the style wasn't quite you know a big mo motorcycle. It's mm -hmm. kind of something in between. Um, now with the Triumph, there is more talk there. There's a more power, and, uh -huh. and actually have to fight to pick up the bike, find grip, and also save the tire. Um, mm -hmm. Bring the tire. So for me, the Triumph is much a much better race bike, and mm -hmm. also. A closer step to MotoGP, also with more electronics than the CBR. And in 2021, Rao and you dominated Moto2. So compared to the other team, so can you tell us what's the advantage of KTM, Joe? Yeah, I think uh, the advantage was, you know, like you just said, um, Rao was was a teammate, and mm -hmm. he learned from I learned from him. Mm -hmm. We pushed each other really hard all year and, and I think that's basically why you know the KTA Aki Sayo team was quite was quite strong this year well quite strong it was very strong this year mm -hmm. so I think um, yeah basically we had information from each other um, you know which was good uh, and bad but you know I think that's like that's why we were so such a strong team because we would just kick everybody's asses <laughs> but the other question for you so you are going to MotoGP next year, and you try the RC16. Yeah. And you're familiar with the new bike. As a rookie for the MotoGP season, what's the goal you want to achieve? Yeah, so we tried the bike in, in Paris, and mm -hmm. uh, it was a nice. um, I was struggling a little bit with my ribs. I had two broken ribs. Mm -hmm. So I, basically I was in a lot of pain um, and struggling to ride properly, but mm -hmm. Even so, I had a um, pretty good two days, you know, I managed to do a few laps and, mm -hmm. and on the day, I think we had a respectable time in the end and, uh, you know, bit by bit, every time we went on the bike, it was just getting better and better and better. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to next year. My goal would be to try to fight for, for the Rookie of the Year and just have some really good races and get some experience under my belt. I think that's the most important thing. So, on the handling, do you feel any difference from the GP bikes and Moto2 bikes? For sure, for sure, it's, it's much different. It's a little bit heavier, but honestly, you don't even feel the weight. But for sure, the brakes, insane. The, the carbon brakes and the power is, mm. is off, off this planet. It's, it's crazy. True. And, and handling wise, I mean, all the bikes have their own characters, but the KTM, I felt already that uh, maybe it's not the fastest um, mid corner mm -hmm. turning bike, but uh, quite stable on brakes, mm -hmm. quite front end and, and good grip. So. Which is kind of my style. So I honestly enjoyed riding the bike, even though I wasn't, you know, perfectly fit. I actually quite liked the first impressions. And for you, uh, which circuit you like most? Phillip Island. Phillip Island? Uh, because your hometown? No, no, no. Well, even so, it's, it's uh, my country, home country. But uh, the track is it's incredible. The track is just something else. And I'm sure you ask the whole paddock, and 90% mm -hmm. of the guys would say the same. So we talk about the helmet you you're holding now. It's a new brand in the MotoGP field. So you're using it from the Moto3. Could yeah. you share something with us about the advantage of NHK helmet? Yeah, for sure. You know, they've believed in me a few years ago and you know, we've been working and improving the helmet every time. And honestly, you know, we've, I've never had any problems with the helmet. And uh, especially this year when nothing could go wrong and everything needed to be perfect every race. So there was no problems. and. Super comfortable helmet, lightweight, and, mm -hmm. and really uh, ventilation as well, which is important for, for the hot races. In Taiwan, we have one circuit, but it's a FIA, level two, it's not for the FIM. And Mike Jones and Anthony West came to Taiwan to try to renew the circuit records. Okay. If possible, we are very welcome for you to Taiwan to try the, the okay. FIA level two, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that would be come come and try and break the record. And, well, I have a few, I have a few records around the place, but uh, <laughs> good to get one. Okay, that's almost my question. The last one because we have 
very close to the Chinese New Year. It's a lunar calendar. It's different in the West. So I want to say hello or some greetings for the Taiwan's motorcycle fans. Okay, so I, I, hi to all Taiwan, <laughs> Taiwan motorcycle fans and, and NHK fans. Uh, wish you a happy Chinese New Year. Yeah. And, uh, and also a happy New Year in Europe. So uh, wish you season's greetings and see you back on track next year. Hope you can you'll get a very good result in the uh, MotoGP field. Thank you so much. I, I hope so as well. Mm -hmm. A lot to learn, but uh, it's a new experience, new challenge, and I uh, can't wait. Thank you for your time. Okay, see you. Bye bye. Thank you, mate.好，那从访问中呢，我们知道其实那个Remy刚呢，真的是蛮喜欢骑车的。他说他跟他哥哥从小就开始骑那个dirt好，那以上就是我们今天影片的内容。喜欢的话，欢迎按赞、分享、加订阅，并开小铃铛。我是大王Singer，我们下次见，拜拜。Hi Taiwan, I wish you a happy New Year's and I wish you guys all the best.